Welcome. In this lecture video, we're going to take a look at systems that have uh, massive ropes or chains. Up to this point, the ropes that we've been using have no mass, and we've been using the mantra, uh, same rope, same tension. But when the rope has mass, that is not true anymore. So we've got this system here, and let's say that this block has mass big M, the lower block has same mass big M, and now our rope is going to have mass little m. And we are going to pull on this system with a force of F up here. So we're just pulling on the top block. And first question that we could ask is, hey, what's the acceleration of the system as a whole? And again, we're going to look at the net force acting on the system. That's going to be equal to the mass of the entire system times the acceleration. So free body diagrams for the upper block. We have F pulling up. Uh, we have its mass, uh, sorry, its weight, mg, pulling down. And then we have a, a tension in the rope here. Let's call this T1 pulling down. Uh, for the bottom block, we are going to have another tension. And we're going to call this tension T2. Uh, it's going to be different than T1. And we're going to have big mg also pulling down on that one. And now what's new here is since the rope itself has mass, we need to take a look at a free body diagram for the rope. So that little black dot represents the rope. And the rope itself has T1 pulling up and T2 pulling down. And this is why it's not same rope, same tension anymore. Since the rope has mass and it is being accelerated, that means there must be a non-zero net force acting on the rope itself. So T1 must be larger than T2. Uh, T1 would be the tension in the rope at the contact point between the upper block uh, and the rope. And then T2 would be the tension at the contact point between the lower block and the rope. Uh, so this is why it's not same rope, same tension anymore. And if we look at the forces acting on the entire system, uh, let's go ahead and say up is the positive direction, because that's the direction of our acceleration. So then we have F in the positive direction. We have T1 pulling down at that point. Uh, we have then T2 is going to pull up. Actually, wait, back up. So uh, T1, um, this T1 pulling down, that's T1 acting on the block itself. We also have a T1 pulling up on the rope. So we do need a plus T1 in here. And we can see that those tensions will cancel out. We have the same thing happening with T2. We have this T2 pulling down on the rope. So that's a minus T2. Uh, and then we have a plus T2 pulling up on the lower block. Uh, and then we have both mg's going down. So we're going to do a minus 2 mg here. And that's, oh, we forgot the mg on the rope itself. Let's do that. We have little mg pulling down. So let's put that in there, minus mg. And then that's all going to equal the total mass of the system. That would be 2m plus little m times a. Now again, we didn't need to write these tensions because they do cancel out. There are the third law pairs in there uh, canceling out for us. So what we have is the upward applied force minus the downward weight forces is equal to the total mass of the system times A. 2 big mg minus little mg is equal to 2 big m plus little m times A. A. So dividing by the total mass, we get our acceleration. Uh, other interesting questions that we can ask now are, what is T1 and what is T2? So let's take a look at that on the other page, the next page here. So again, a free body diagram for the upper block is going to be applied force F going up. Uh, we have big MG going down. And then we had T1 also going down. So just like we've done with systems in the past to solve for tension, we need to look at the free body diagram for just one component of the system. So here I've done the upper block. So the net force acting on the upper block is equal to its mass times its acceleration. So that is going to be big F minus big MG minus T1 is going to equal 
big M times the acceleration that we found previously. And we'd plug in that relatively ugly mess uh, that we found previously and solve for T1. So we end up with big F minus big M G minus big M A is equal to T1. And doing the same thing maybe for the bottom block to solve for T2, free body diagram for the bottom block, we have T2 pulling up uh, and we have big MG pulling down and that's it. So now the net force acting on that bottom block is going to equal its mass times its acceleration. Remember the acceleration is the same for both. And we would get then T2 pulling up minus big MG is equal to big M times A. Uh, and then solving for T2 we have this expression big M A plus big MG is equal to our T2. And we can always double check our work by looking to see if T1 is going to be larger than T2 to accelerate the rope. So go ahead and do a Newton's second law now for the rope itself and confirm your answers with T1 and T2. So plug in T1 that you solve for, plug in T2 that you solve for, and you should get little m times a. So you can check your work. So dealing with ropes with tension, we need to now forget our lovely mantra, same rope, same tension. That is not true anymore. Uh, now you're going to have unequal tensions. Every little section of the rope is going to have a different tension. Uh, and as we go down the rope, the tension will decrease and get smaller and smaller and smaller. Because you can think that like that little chunk of rope right there, that tension in that rope right there, is only responsible for accelerating that little part of the mass of the rope and then big M below it. Uh, whereas this little piece of uh, rope right here has a tension in it that has to accelerate that amount of the mass of the rope, including big M below it. So it's not same rope, same tension anymore. And generally, we now need to do a free body diagram for the rope itself with those unequal tensions. All right? So that's it. Just consider the rope basically another mass in the system. So this is not just two masses. Now it's three. That's it for now.